steam pal here. Hey, I forgot to turn on my light. <laughs> I got this new light. Check this out. Boom. Let's see here. There we go. Look at that. I know it's kind of bright out still. You know, there's some light coming in from the windows. But when it's a little darker, actually, wait one second. Let me see if I can just do this real quick. Pull these blinds here. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. But yeah, I got this new light back here. Pretty cool. 100 watt uh, light, strobe light, changes colors. Got all these cool little settings. So yes, we're improving our media operation little by little. But anyway, anyways, just wanted to come, uh, come to you real quickly today with this quick word. I want to first of all say happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there. Uh, we here at Line of Light Ministries, me and my wife, we honor you, we love you, we thank God for mothers. It's an unusual Mother's Day for us. I don't think there's ever been a mother, Mother's Day in my life since I was a little tiny baby that I haven't been inside a church, you know, for Mother's Day. But I'm excited to see that more and more churches are coming back, beginning to open up their doors and you know, the little Assembly of God that we're attending here in South Carolina, we expect to open here uh, real soon again. So, but anyways, um, <clears throat> I had an encounter with the Lord last night. And me and my prophetic friend, Eric Arnold, have been talking about this pretty much like all night and, and, and all morning here, all day here today. I've been going back and forth. And the Lord just keeps giving um, these prophetic words, these prophetic signs. So I just wanted to get on here quickly and deliver this word. Um, it is time for the body of Christ, and in particular leaders, to be more honest, okay? And what do I mean by that? I mean that when we have a relationship with the Lord, okay, especially if we have any amount of seasoning in our relationship with the Lord, any amount of maturity where we've been walking for the, with the Lord for a period of years, we've been walking with the Lord for a period of time, we know the voice of God, and even more than that, we know the particular way that God speaks to us. And, you know, it's been said over the years that the prophetic, you know, is not just about receiving. It's all about handling revelation. And, you know, we've seen a lot of sermons. I've said it many times myself, you know, that we got to know what to release and what to deliver. But, you know, the Lord has to come even expose our own hearts sometimes on what we're choosing to withhold from God's people and what we're choosing to deliver. And that's what I feel the Lord's been dealing with my heart on lately is I've actually found just being honest, you know, in the spirit of honesty, you know, which is the, the, the subject of this broadcast, I've found that some of the revelations I've carried over the last few years that I've come to believe now the Lord has wanted me to share openly with the body of Christ. I've come to realize that some of them I've held back because of fear. Some of them I've held back because I've gotten stung before. I've gotten stung many times for sharing my heart, for sharing revelation that I believe that God's given me from my heart and people not liking it, you know? People rejecting me because of that. People misunderstanding me. But you know what? The truth of the matter is, saints, is that we're always going to be misunderstood and we're always going to be misrepresented. This is part of... Of walking with Jesus. Jesus said, if, if, if the world hates me, it will hate you as well. If the world persecuted me, it's going to persecute you as well. And part of Jesus' own persecution was he was grossly misunderstood and he was grossly uh, misinterpreted. There were, there were people that turned around even at his trial and said, I heard him say this, I heard him say that. And even at times they had specific quotations of things he actually said. They twisted it to their own advantage and to their own narrative in order to bring a charge against him. You know, and this is how the religious spirit works. This is how the religious spirit puts prophets on trial as well, just like the religious spirit put Jesus of Nazareth on trial. If you recall, the Bible says the Pharisees sought for occasion to catch Jesus in saying certain things, all right? So the Pharisees would set up these situations where they would try to bait Jesus into saying certain things so that they might bring a charge openly against him, so that they might discredit him. And you know, I've just been through a fiery trial the last couple weeks where I've had this happen to me multiple times. 
multiple times um, within the last few weeks. And I want to just read the scripture to you. Isn't this crazy how sometimes we actually live the Bible? And in this case, I feel like I've been living the, the biblical story of my own namesake, Stephen, Stephen in the Bible. But it says concerning Stephen, okay, Stephen in Acts chapter 6, it says whom they, excuse me, let's start with verse 5, Acts chapter 6 verse 5, and the saying pleased the whole multitude. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, okay? I'm going to skip down to verse 9. It says, And then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen. The freedmen, okay? The Cyrenians, the Alexandrians, those of Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen, okay? And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. You see, that's what I'm praying for. I'm praying for, Lord, let me be filled with the same wisdom that even my namesake, even Stephen from the Bible was filled with so that, you know, when I'm contending over truth, they're not ultimately arguing with me. They're arguing with the spirit of wisdom, revelation that's operating through me, which is unbeaten. You can never win a debate with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's why the Pharisees could never really catch Jesus in those situations because he discerned it and he spoke by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But it says here, they secretly, verse 11, induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and they came upon him and they seized him and they brought him to the council and then they set up false witnesses, okay, false witnesses to testify against. I'm telling you, saints, this has happened to me, even in the last few weeks, you know, and this has happened to me, of course, before, but the recent sting of this um, has happened within the last few weeks, where people literally, leaders in the body of Christ, that I was open with, that I was honest with, okay, over the phone, that I kind of bore my heart to, and, 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 and come to find out, the only reason they were trying to get me on the phone was to try to catch me into saying certain things so that they might bring a charge against me to other leaders. You know how wicked that is? You know how evil that is? And there may be one of these people that's watching this broadcast right now. And uh, you know what? You got to deal with the Lord, you know, with your own heart, you know. But um, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> As for me, okay, as for my wife, as for, for me and, 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 and this household, God forbid that I would ever try to call up a leader or try to call up anybody, try to talk to anybody with the mischievous intention to try to induce them into saying certain things just so I can use those words against them. I mean, whatever happened to privacy? Whatever happened to the sanctity of privacy? I mean, like, I, I feel like literally I can't trust anybody anymore, hardly anybody anymore, to even send a private message, text message, you know, Facebook Messenger, because they're just going to take a screenshot and blast it out on their Facebook profile. When has this ever been godly? You know, but that's what the religious spirit does. The religious spirit does the most horrible, ungodly things, but it does it with burning and righteous zeal, and it convinces itself that it's righteous in committing evil acts. But it's not righteous. It's a religious spirit, and it needs to be called out. Um... <clears throat> But, you know, this is what the Lord is dealing with me right now on. He's dealing with me on this. Stephen, you need to be more honest, okay, with some of the revelations that I've given to you. And you need to really evaluate, really, really dig deep and ask the Lord to expose your heart. This is the way the Lord is speaking to me. Expose your heart and see what you've held back and the reason for it. And I tell you, if we really did a, a careful evaluation of that many times, many times it's not wisdom. It's actually fear that parades itself as wisdom, right? Have you ever had anybody tell you, well, you know, be careful, brother. Be careful, sister. You need to use wisdom. But you like, you can sense the spirit behind it. It's actually not wisdom. It's the spirit of fear. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> the Bible says, okay, that wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, okay? Wisdom begins with fearing the Lord. And if you're a prophet or you're a prophetic minister, then you bear the mantle of God's word. You bear the burden of the word of the Lord. You have to really fear God with that burden. Because here's the thing, saints. I've found over the years in my prophetic walk that many times, not all the time, but many times when God begins to release 
a certain revelation in a certain season, there's a reason why he's beginning to release that revelation in that season instead of the prior season, instead of a season in the future. It's because that revelation needs to be released in that season. And there's this miraculous thing that happens, saints. When we receive revelation from the Lord, it's literally like ingesting manna in the spirit. It's like literally that thing begins to, it begins to get inside of us and it begins to assimilate into our spirit, man, even out into our soul, even out into our physical flesh. We literally feel some sort of transformation happening by the word and it empowers us. It energizes. So what is that that you're feeling? What is that that you're sensing? You're sensing the anointing the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that comes when revelation is given so that you might deliver that revelation with unction and grace. We want to deliver every word with grace, okay? Because if we don't deliver it in grace, if we don't deliver it in the gift of God and the anointing, then many times we can deliver it in the flesh. And anytime you deliver a word in the flesh, it has the potential to bring death through the dead letter of the law, right? But Jesus said in John 6, my words are spirit and they're life. And that's what we want to speak. We want to speak spirit and we want to speak life, but that comes, I'm convinced, by the revelation of God, by the revelation of Jesus Christ that he shares with you in intimacy. So, you know, some of you probably saw, and this is, once again, me in the spirit of honesty, okay? Some of you are not going to like um, with some of the things I have to say today and in the days to come in the spirit of honesty, but you know what? Whether you like it or whether you don't like it, I'm being honest, okay? And, and God's not afraid of this stuff. God's not afraid of who I am. He knows me inside and out. He knows my heart, and he's not ashamed of me, okay? He's not ashamed of me. So I just ask that people would just be open to what I'm about to say, what I'm saying here today, and what I'm about to roll out over the next week and over the next couple weeks, because it's going to be really hard, some of the things that I have to speak in honesty, some of the things that I'm going to speak in honesty over the next couple of weeks, I believe are going to shake people to their very core. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to tell some honest testimonies. I'm going to speak some honest accounts of what I have observed and what I have seen and what I have been a part of in the charismatic church behind the scenes, behind the veil, and it's going to involve even some maybe your heroes of the faith. Okay, but it's time. It needs to be spoken. <clears throat> Um, because I, I believe the Lord is stirring me up to speak some of these things. I'm going to be more honest about some of the details of what I went through last year involving Todd Bentley, involving you know Rick Joyner and, and, and Patricia King and that, that whole thing that many of you saw that I was kind of muzzled in, to be honest with you. I was shut down and I was told to shut up and I was told you can't say nothing, you know, and uh, you know, I was trying the best that I could to be submissive and, and, and to be kind and to be gentle and to be humble, all that stuff. But I believe now that the Lord wants some of this stuff in the light. It, it's a season of exposure, you know. I, I had an encounter last night where, um, where something happened. <laughs> I'll just I'll just tell you, uh, the the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night, and 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 there was like an alert that went out in the spirit to me, and I started praying in tongues. Okay. This was like five o'clock in the morning, literally. I sat up in bed and I started praying in tongues. And then I get a call from my friend Eric. <laughs> my friend Eric says, you need to check this out right now, buddy. Um, you know, because you just posted an email just went out. Okay, there was an email from our ministry that went out with a YouTube yesterday, a YouTube video. And the YouTube video had not been, um, it had not been edited properly. Okay, at the end of, of me and one of my friend Eric's Zooms, one of our Zooms that we did a few weeks ago, and we thought that the camera had cut out, but actually the camera kept running. And there was about 11 minutes of a private conversation that me and Eric thought we were having in private um, that went out to the world. <laughs> There's all these people that have seen it. And uh, <laughs> I mean, Eric called me this morning at 5 a.m. while I'm in the middle of prayer and my heart just sank. I'm like, oh my God, it can't be happening again because this has happened to me before. I mean, people have posted my private conversations on the internet, on Facebook, and I tell you, you never want that to happen to you. Let me just tell you, you never want that to happen. It's like the worst feeling in the world, okay? And it's not that 
you know, I try to hide anything. I, mean, I don't think any of us intentionally try to hide anything, you know, but, you know, with our friends, you know, with my family, with my wife, you know, there's just a level of openness that I have with them. And part of the reason is because I can trust my wife. I can trust my family. And there's just a lot of people out there. You become more open, you become more honest. And, you know, a lot of times you just get burned because you just can't trust people a lot of times. I mean, it's really sad that it has to be that way. Um, but there's just so many people in the body of Christ, you can't trust them. You know, they, they, they will they will do whatever it takes to throw you under a bus and watch it run over you over and over again just to get one leg up in the ministry ladder, just to get one leg up in the hierarchy, you know, of, of the charismatic church. It's quite disgusting, and God's going to deal with this. Um, but anyways, once that incident happened... Um, you know, I had a few people actually that emailed me this morning who had watched the whole video and watched the end of it. And they were telling me, you know, just some amazing things that some of these people were saying. They were saying, hey, you know, I think that you didn't mean to have this video out there in which like 11 minutes at the end was of a private conversation. But they said, you know what, we really appreciate it because we really got to see the real you. We really got to see your real heart. And on that particular YouTube, which I took down, okay, and I'll be putting it back up and I will be editing uh, that part out. But in that particular segment, you saw where my friend and me, uh, me and my friend Eric Arnold, were sharing openly as brothers, you know, not just about our strengths and some of the victories we're seeing right now, but also about some of our struggles, about our some of our struggles as, you know, just Christians and, you know, in our faith and, you know, all that stuff, right? But, uh, you know, a lot of times when you're a prophetic person, this stuff doesn't just happen randomly. Many times the sovereign hand of God is on your life. And, and, and sometimes I find that a lot of times when this type of stuff happens, it's not outside of God's jurisdiction. It's not outside of his control. Many times he allows this stuff to slip through the cracks, you know, to show us something, to give us a message, to give us a sign. So, you know, I'm... Uh, you know, I'm meditating on that this morning, and then I get those these emails from some people, and there's some real anointed things, you know, that some of these people are saying in some of those emails, you know. There was one man in particular, a man named Frank. I don't know if you're watching now, Frank. God bless you. But um, Frank said, whenever the part came at the end of your email, or excuse me, at the end of your YouTube video where you started talking openly, and, and you didn't know you were still being recorded, he says, the fear of God hit me. The fear of God hit me that at any moment... You know, God could lay bare our hearts and expose our hearts to the world, you know? And I just want to read this scripture to you. This is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Verse 12 and 13. It says, for the living word, okay? It, for, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, okay? It's uh, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit, of the joints and of the marrow is a discerner, okay, of the thoughts and intents of the heart, right? So if you're a person that is committed to the Lord Jesus Christ to carry the living word, not a dead word, the Bible says that faith without works is dead, okay? And the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word, all right? So if you don't actually live, if you don't have conviction about what you're reading and what you're believing and you don't take action, okay, you don't initiate action and you don't live it, it actually becomes like a dead word to you. Why? Because it's having no effect in your life. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, 2, that unless you mix the word of God with faith, it will profit you nothing, right? And in order for you to mix it with faith, you have to act on it. You actually have to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. So when you take the word of God in your life, okay, and you say, I'm going to be a doer of the word, you're actively uh, handling the living word. The word of God has become alive in your heart. And when it does that, Okay, it doesn't just act as a prophetic gift so you can discern other people's heart. It discerns your own heart, right? What you're handling is dangerous. Just like it says in Hebrews, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I mean, you exist in that realm uh, of the fear of the Lord, and you are naked before the Lord. The Lord knows all your pluses, all your minuses. He knows all your strengths, all your weaknesses. And let me tell you something. I got a lot of weaknesses, okay? I've got some strengths. By the grace of God, what I've freely received from the Lord Jesus Christ as grace gifting on my life, but I've got a lot of weaknesses too. Man, do I get in the flesh sometimes, and I need to continually kill that flesh. I need to continually take up my cross. 
You know, just like Jesus told Peter that the flesh, it, 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 the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Therefore, pray. That's my life, okay? My life is my spirit's willing. My flesh is weak, so I want to be a man of prayer, okay? That, that's how I operate. But the Bible says that living word that you handle will be a discerner of your own heart, of your own in thoughts, of your own intentions as well. And I believe what's happened even within the last, last 24 hours has been a discerner. It's laid bare even my own heart. And I've been seeing I need to be more honest with people. I need to be more honest with people about what I'm carrying, okay? And let me tell you something. Some of the revelations that I'm about to release in this hour, they are not going to be comfortable for very many people. But you know what? They need to be spoken. I am terribly concerned right now with the charismatic church. I am terribly concerned um, with, with, with what has been uh, come to be called NAR, okay, the new apostolic reformation that involves, you know, this movement that encompasses, you know, ministries like Bethel and, and uh, Morningstar Ministries and even IHOP in, in Toronto and just, you know, all over the world. There's been this movement that's come, you know, out of the revival I see in, in, in the 90s, out of that renewal and, uh, you know, Bob Jones was a big part of that. And so many other apostolic and prophetic uh, fathers and God's launched a movement there and it's done so many great things. But I am deeply concerned, deeply concerned that there are parts of this movement that are going into straight apostasy, literally. That, that if some of the things that are on course right now continue, people could literally start denying the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, there are universalists that have infiltrated this movement. There are people that literally do not believe in hell anymore. There are people that do not believe, okay, that hell is a real place. These are people in this movement that are rubbing shoulders with some of your favorite apostolic and prophetic shakers, and no one seems to care. No one seems to cry out. No one seems to be able to stand independent from a system and handle the word of God, even if it means taking out their ministry, even if it means taking out their life. And I'll tell you what, I'm not a perfect human being. I make mistakes, but one thing I do have, and this is a heart that I've had since I was a very young man, okay, since I first gave my everything to Jesus, okay, at 13, 14 years old, when I committed everything to him, one thing I do have, and I don't even understand it myself, it's all the grace of God. I don't get no credit for it. I have a heart which says, Lord, I don't care what it costs me. I don't care what how I'm misrepresented. I don't care how I'm misinterpreted. I don't care how heavy this cross is. I am going to bear it, and I am going to obey the Lord Jesus Christ. I am going to obey the commandments of Scripture, and I am going to obey what I believe the Lord Jesus is telling me to do by revelation right? And ultimately, you're the only person that can decide what Jesus is speaking to you. This is not the Old Testament. I don't have to run to some Samuel or run to some prophet to find out where my donkeys went. I can ask the Holy Spirit for myself. And although, yes, God will put people around you, let every word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses, there's some people around you, they're not going to establish the word of God in your life because they're rebellious to the word of God, okay? They're rebellious. They're a rebellious house, to the word of God. <clears throat> so it's time to get honest, saints. It's time to be honest with what the Lord has given us. It's time to be honest, once again, with what God's speaking to us. It's time to be honest with what the Bible says. I thought this was supposed to be the standard right here. I thought this was supposed to be the standard that we all come to. I thought this was supposed to be the common ground that we all meet on. If we don't meet on this common ground, then why aren't we just mixing with the Mormons? Why don't we just go, you know, and have some prophetic conferences with some Jehovah Witnesses? You know, why don't we just invite the invite everybody in, right? If this no longer matters, if this is no longer the common ground, well, shoot, just open it up. Let's have the Dalai Lama just come to our next prophetic conference. You know, let's have some Muslim imams just come on in, right? If, if it's just all about love, if it's just all about grace. No, Paul told Timothy... Preach the word. He said, encourage, exhort, and he said, rebuke with all authority. And Timothy was a young man. He was commanded to even rebuke, okay? But you know, the scripture saint, saints, this is the record. This is the testimony 
of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have, which came by the spirit of prophecy, according to Revelations 19.10. This is the testimony of Jesus. It's not contained in the Book of Mormon. It's not contained in some scrolls or some tablets that this supposed angel Moroni came and gave to some man here in America, you know, a couple hundred years ago. It's not contained in some, you know, some books that, 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 are, in the more, that are in the Muslim faith, okay? It's not contained in some supposed encounter that Muhammad had with Gabriel. No, this is the holy written word of God. Okay, it's been vindicated. It's even been vindicated scientifically today because they went and dug up these these Qumran scrolls, these Dead Sea scrolls, and found that literally the scripture that we have today is the most accurate text, ancient text in the history of the world. It's got like 99.9% .9 accuracy with the scrolls that were carried down through the ages and the ones that they compared it with that came out of those that came out of those caves. Okay, that's God's saints. That's because this is the word of God, and I'm telling you. This is what we stand on. We stand on the word. We stand on the living word, which is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ contained here. You know, that's why I'm being bold and I've been speaking out the last couple days with all this stuff flaring up in our country with, you know, Ahmad Arbery, because the social justice gospel is not the gospel. It will never heal the racial wounds in this land. It will never even make a dent. All it will do is give more power over to a communist spirit that's working in this country, that's working in the media, that's working in politics, that's working in government. All it would do is give more power over that spirit and take more freedom freedoms from all people, not just whites or blacks, all people. The only solution to the wounds and the hurts, okay, and the issues we're dealing with in this country is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And once again, just like I did yesterday, I rebuke every leader out there, every church leader, I rebuke you for jumping on the bandwagon and preaching a social justice gospel that is not the true gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, here's the truth, is that when people choose to not forgive. When you choose to not forgive what people have done to you, what people have done to your ancestors, then what you're doing is you're parking on a gushing well of unforgiveness. You're parking on a gushing demonic well of demonic life and power. And there's people in this nation, in the Democratic Party, in the media, that are stoking those fires. There's people in certain communities, okay, that are sitting right on that well and you know what? They like it. They like the power it gives them. But here's the thing. If they're actually going to gain their own souls, if some of them, if they're going to get their souls back, they're going to have to forgive because you can't receive the blood of Jesus unless you forgive. Jesus said, if you do not forgive, I will not forgive you. That's right. The grace that you receive, you have to release. So let's take me, for instance. If I'm a white brother in the Lord, and I've been wronged by a black brother. I've been wronged by someone else, a minority. I have to forgive them. I have to let the same grace that flowed abundantly to me from the Lord Jesus Christ for my forgiveness, I have to let it flow to them. But here's the thing. There's a trade-off there. Because then you lose the power that you've been operating in in that demonic stream. But you know what? What, what good is it to have power? being demonically fueled if you lose your own soul. And there's people that have absolutely lost their soul. They, they have bowed down to the racist demon and the racist idol in this country, and they're being completely manipulated by that. And then they exalt their message to actually be the gospel of Jesus Christ, to actually be the gospel, the good news. No, it's not. The gospel of Jesus Christ is selfless, okay? The gospel of Jesus Christ holds no one's sins against them. Am I saying that civic authorities, you know, shouldn't exercise justice, shouldn't exercise the legal system correctly? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about individuals. I'm talking about hearts in this matter. So that's a little bit of, of, of a tangent there. But I'm just telling you guys, this is why I'm being more honest even about those things. Okay? For years, I wouldn't say hardly anything about those things because the moment you open up your mouth, you get character assassinated. I mean, I mean, how many times in the last 24 hours have I been called a racist? Have I been called a bigot? Have I been called someone, you know, that's not compassionate, uncaring, all this stuff? right? People just want to judge you. People just already have you figured out after listening to you for 30 seconds on Facebook. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> but here's the word, you guys. We have to be more honest, okay? And I'm talking in particular to the church, and I'm talking in particular to prophetic people right now. When God gives you a word, it's a burden that he puts upon you. The burden 
okay, speaks of responsibility. You're now responsible for the word. And if you're a prophet, many times you have to release the word. Read Jeremiah 20. The Bible says that Jeremiah was induced. He felt tricked by the Lord. The Lord said, come on in, son. I got a great prophetic ministry for you. I'm going to use you to shake nations. I'm going to use you to tear things down and raise up new things and build. Oh, man, sounds like an encouraging word, right? Jeremiah 1, the Lord's going to put the word in my mouth, and things are going to get built up. Nations, the word of God over nations. <laughs> but by the time you get to Jeremiah 20, Jeremiah is, is reeling, man. He's like, God, what did you get me into? What is going on? So the Bible says in Jeremiah 20, he tried to hold it in. He tried to hold it back, but the burden was so heavy, he had to release it. And that's what I'm telling you. I have a burden for this movement. I have a burden for the charismatic church. I love the charismatic church. And that's why I'm going to begin to say some of the things that I'm going to begin to say. That's why I'm going to begin to expose some of the things that the Lord is saying to expose. So buckle up your seatbelts. Get ready. This is 2020. It's time for a Mount Carmel showdown. It's time for true prophets to arise, two true prophetic voices to arise like Elijah that count not their own lives dear unto the death, that will speak the word of the Lord, that will take up their cross no matter what the cost and confront when God says to confront. And some of you might say, well, you know, Stephen, I subscribe to the whamsy pamsy gospel of all war ended at the cross. Well, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time for peace and there's a time for war. And I'm telling you, on some of these fronts, it's time for war. It's time for conflict. It's time for Elijah to come out of his cave and confront the false prophets, confront the prophets of Baal, confront the prophets of Ashtaroth, confront the prophets that are eating from Jezebel's table. That's right. They're eating and they're getting fat and they're getting wealthy and they're getting powerful and they're getting prosperous, pandering to an evil spirit. That's what's sickened to me so much about what I'm seeing in the media, what I'm seeing from Christian leaders the last couple of days. They are pandering to an evil spirit, to a communist, racist spirit, all to gain brownie points with the system so they can keep the money flowing. And you can't tell me that's not the case in many of these cases because the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. When someone has aligned themselves with an evil spirit, many times you will find that root operating in all those situations. That's why the Lord came and taught me for almost two years about how to be completely dependent on the economy of heaven. I believe it's so I could speak what God wants me to speak and I don't have to think about what I'm going to say okay, for the sake of my checkbook, for the sake of my wallet, because my finance doesn't come through whether or not I offend you or make you happy. My finance, my sustenance, my provision comes from Jesus Christ. It comes from the economy of heaven. I don't sow into your system to gain brownie points with you. I give unto the Lord. I bring my tithe and my offerings into the house of the Lord, into the treasure house of the Lord. And when I give to him, he promises to give it back to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. My only job is to be obedient, to be obedient to the word of the Lord, to be obedient to what God's telling me to do and what God's telling me to say. So that's what's going down, saints. Get ready. It's going to be wild. But once again, happy Mother's Day. I want to ask you to forgive me once again for my corona hair. It's ridiculous, I know. I, uh, I'm about this close to just, you know, finally doing the lockdown, corona, low maintenance, you know, shave it all off, you know. <laughs> but I've been resisting. I'm like, oh, Amanda, tell my wife, the salons are about to open again. I just got to hold on. Like it's curling. Oh, gosh, man. Anyways, God bless you guys. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy this day and get ready because uh, things are about to heat up. God bless you. Hey, my name is Stephen Powell, and I want to thank you for watching this video on my YouTube channel. Go ahead and click the button right here, and you can subscribe to our channel so you get new videos as they come available. And also, you can go ahead and watch another video right now if you click this button over here. God bless you.